Hello, podcast listeners. Welcome to another episode of Podcast with Gautam and Jin. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jin Van Stee, and with me is my co-host, Gautam Sivach. And today, we're excited to have Elizabeth Stahl with us. Elizabeth Stahl is Director and Distinguished Engineer. She leads the IBM Client Engineering for Systems Organization. Elizabeth focuses on infrastructure modernization, optimization, and emerging technologies for our clients. She is a member of the IBM Academy of Technology, is on the board of directors of Computer Measurement Group and the Music Settlement. Elizabeth holds a BA in mathematics from the University of Pennsylvania and an MBA from NYU. Elizabeth, welcome to our podcast. Hey, Jen, thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Now, please share with our podcast listeners, what are you working on right now? Yeah, right now I'm leading a team called Client Engineering for Systems. And what we do is we work with clients all over the world, um, assisting them in terms of the challenges and co-creating with them. So we'll do all sorts of work with them workshops, consulting, proof of concepts, benchmarks in order to prove IBM systems, meaning we work with IBM mainframes, power systems, and IBM storage. So we're here to help our clients in anything systems. Thank you uh, for that answer, Elizabeth. Our second question to you is, what do you think are the most exciting emerging technologies? So there's a lot of exciting emerging technologies out there that we all read about. Um, a lot of the ones that we hear about, um, maybe quantum is certainly very exciting for um, the, the future in terms of what we'll be able to do with systems like our Q, IBM Q system, um, the 5G area um, in networking is super exciting. But I still think that there's still so much opportunity for one area in particular, and that is hybrid cloud. There is, there's still a lot of clients that we work with that are just starting to work to work and look at the systems that they have and then using other systems that are outside of their data centers and connecting them, accessing data on them, bringing data together. There's so much incredible opportunity out there for bringing this, bringing this data together and really helping solve problems, anything from um, increasing retail to looking at a marketing plan to working with um, customers at, at your, your financial organization. I, I just feel like there's so much opportunity that still, you know, we've been working in it for quite a while, but it's, there's still so much there left to do. And so I really think that you know, someone might say, well, that's, we've been talking about hybrid cloud for quite a while, but I still think there is so much out there that I'd like to see done. And then you combine that with some of the different AI technologies, and you could really use, um, you know, some of the, the inferencing and, and other types of AI technologies on, um, uh, on our systems to to really discover and and affect new areas so I, I think that really the combination of those two hybrid cloud and ai is still really where um there there's just so much opportunity to to do so much more and to gain so much competitive advantage great uh, the things that are possible with quantum computing uh like calculating value of pi, solving challenges, mathematical problems that have not been solved yet, gives a lot of hope to all the technologists like us. My second question to you is, uh, what do you, uh, what is your advice uh, that you have for uh, some of the folks who are just starting their career? Yeah, that's a great question because it's so important 
to um, think about what some of the best things to do when you're starting out in your career. And so I was really thinking about three things that came to mind. Number one is I spent a lot of time saying yes, not saying no early in my career. And I think that was a great advantage because by taking advantage of lots of different opportunities, you just never know which is going to be something that's really going to take off. So there may be some things that, you know, you just spend a little time on and really don't um, percolate to something bigger. And then something that you may not have thought was going to be something great ends up being a springboard to some amazing opportunity. So I really think that that was helpful. Of course, now, you know, when you're way down the road in your career, you end up having to, as you guys know, having to say no a lot. Um, because you're asked to do so much from so many different areas. But I think early on, really saying yes as much as you can, that was really helpful for me, and I would definitely recommend that. So that was number one. Number two is really to get out of your comfort zone. So a lot of times I think people think, you know, I, I, I have this specialty, this technical area maybe, that is my particular specialty. And if someone asks me um, to do something that's a little bit different, I immediately am gonna say, nope, you know, sorry, don't have the skills. And maybe I know someone I can refer them to, maybe not. But that's sort of the, the feel is, oh, you know, that's something new and different. Not sure I want to do that. And I think what's helped me along the way is saying to myself, oh, maybe this, since it's a, maybe a little related to the area that is my technical specialty, maybe it is something that would be great to also add to my portfolio of skills. So, you know, an, an example might be, I started out my career doing a lot of capacity planning for systems. And then I started ask, getting asked to do some more systems performance related activities, which were somewhat different, but there was, um, you know, some complementary skills to them. And so I decided, you know what, let me take this on. Let me learn as much as I can here and take this on. And I've just continually done that over the years, whether it's adding DB2 to my portfolio or Gin blockchain, right, which we did. So just anything new that comes up that would be, you know, may feel a little uncomfortable at first has been a great advantage for, for me. And I would definitely recommend that for people starting out in their careers. And then number three is learning as much as you can. You know, I get um, asked sometimes by people just starting out in their careers by interns, um, for example, you know, oh, what do I do when I'm waiting for this person to get back to me on this project or I need this answer and I'm not sure, should I just be sitting here, you know, um, slacking for fun or, or doing something else? And so that really is the great opportunity is, especially early in your career, whenever you have some of that, let's say a little bit more downtime, is just learning as much as you can. There's so much, there's so many self-study guides out there. There's so much online learning. There's so much that, that you can do and that's offered that, that's free, um, that that's just the most wonderful thing. And then you never know when some opportunity is gonna then come your way that you just decided, oh, okay, I'm going to learn this new programming language or this new database or some new technology that suddenly you are the person. And that can be so helpful if you're trying to, let's say, get more known in your career or in some cases when I was a consultant and you wanted to work with certain clients or let's say at some points you did want to travel, but then in other points you didn't want to travel knowing um, and learning many different technologies was really crucial to get you kind of in the door on some of the um, engagements that you were working on. So that would be 
um, my, my third part of advice for people starting out in their careers. Uh, you know, you had talked about, you know, starting your career and, um, and sort of, you know, saying yes and follow your curiosity. Um, and that could lead to lead to something great. Um, so, yeah, so I was thinking about maybe another follow on question, like what, what advice would you have for mid career professionals if they want to change things up a little bit? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a lot of different options mid career, I would say. One is. You could definitely, and there's so much opportunity to stay technical and just sort of branch out into go deep, definitely have a major, but also have a bunch of minors. So go stay deep in your one area, whether, you know, whatever that is, and then have some minors and grow those. So that's definitely um, something. Um, be a team leader, be a technical team leader and, and reach for that. The other thing that, that I've actually, I've done in my career, which worked well for me was pursuing both a technical and a managerial career and sort of, you know, we think about them almost as two different ladders in a way and kind of hopping back and forth from one ladder to another, um, I was a technical um, professional for many, many years and then got the opportunity to um, manage a large team as a, a, of consultants in our services organization and then came back to a very technical work um, and then had an opportunity to go back into managing a large technical team and I've enjoyed both and I've enjoyed doing both those things. So, I, you know, I really see it as, I mean, there's also, you know, some people will decide they really, really enjoy um, the management and will stay, you know, in that area, let's say stay on that ladder. So I, I think there's really, when you look at it, maybe the three different, three different options I would see for, for mid career is staying on that technical ladder. Um, moving over, maybe if you're a technical person over to that uh, management ladder or what has been wonderful for me is hopping back and forth between the two. Wonderful insight. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Leading client engagements and working backwards towards the technology is the key. Success is not about delivering a feature, but it is to solve with customers and address their challenges. Great message for people starting their career, that is, start being a yes person. Today with us was Elizabeth Stahl, a distinguished personal leading client engineering at IBM. And you were listening to podcasts with Gautam Sivaj and Jin Men.